Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we're on the website of French auction portal Intranchair and we're going to have a look at another French auction, this time by Alexandra Londra. This is an auction house that we've looked at a few auctions before in the past. They seem to do fairly regular auctions at least once, maybe twice a year. Uh, so they have an auction here of musical instruments. Looks like they've got quite a few lots actually, 211, like a good variety of stuff. Um, so before we begin, I'd just like to say if you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing or like or comment because it really does help the channel. So yeah, they have this auction. It's due to finish on the 15th of April. It's the 13th today, so a couple of days left to go. Buyer's premium seems to be 25% on top of their hammer fee. Once again, just a reminder that this is a French auction, so if you're outside of France or outside of Europe, bear in mind import, export fees, shipping, all of that stuff, any CITES restrictions. So yeah, without further ado, let's just kind of uh, crack on and see what we've got. We'll try and blitz through it and not take too long, but uh, let's see if we've got anything interesting in this auction. Uh, let's have a look here. A removable Berber trumpet in copper, brass and nickel silver, nicely decorated. Okay, interesting. It's not something I've uh, come across very often. 30 to 40 euros. It's quite a cool looking uh, thing. Be interesting to know what kind of age it might have to it. I've got a Boehm system flute here by Rampone and Kazani in Milan. 50 to 60 uh, euros there. We won't get too crazy into that. A lot of three sax horns there. Flute by Fernand uh, Chaplin and Co. 60 to 80. Boehm System Transverse Flute there. Noble Artiste Clarinet in B flat. This is a very nice clarinet here. Boxwood. 19th century clarinet in B flat. Stamped to Martin Fee in Paris. Slightly wavy boxwood. Okay few other details i really do actually like the look of these uh boxwood clarinets a lot if i if money was no object i might well collect some of them just because of the way they look they're very nice uh we've got a cornet in silver metal by francois besson there 120 150 uh euros tenor saxophone here by pierre in paris 200 to 250 euros piccolo there by Henri Selma, four valves, 300 to 350 euros there. Oh, saxophone by Henri Selma, um, 2000 to 2200. These are always really popular from 1979 there. What else we got? Uh, Paolo Soprani chromatic accordion there. German uh, Sur diatonic accordion there. Italian chromatic accordion, Fratelli Crozio. Romantic accordion stamped at Busson in Paris. Diatonic accordion Francois de Denis. Small diatonic accordion with eight notes. Set of accordion spare parts, including a Mogène Frère accordion case, an accordion wind chest, and blades. Okay, so bits and bobs there for 10, 10 to 20 euros. Anonymous German diatonic accordion. Mojan Frère Chromatic Accordion. It's quite a nice colour there. Pearly green acrylacca. Yeah, it's quite nice. Nice looking colour there. 50 to uh, 60 euros. Diatonic Accordion there. Another chromatic accordion. Uh, Ijado in Laval. Another bits and bobs there of accordions. Hona Diatonic Accordion. And uh, Casriel Paris Chromatic Accordion. Scandali accordion, a lot of accordions in this. Oh, we've got a random violin in between accordions here. French violin made in Mirko around 1930 with a Steiner label. Okay. Looks in pretty good condition. 220 to 250 euros there. Yeah, looks interesting enough. Not the highest grade of uh, kind of French violin, but uh, looks decent enough. So back to uh, accordions. Renault. Ames Droz diatonic accordion. Edos Santos chromatic accordion there. That's quite cool. Uh, a Crucianelli Nazareno chromatic accordion. Here's a Fratelli Crozio one in a fancy case there. Interesting auction so far. Right, romantic German peg guitar. 30 to 40. This is the lowest kind of quality of uh, 
these types of guitars you can get it's got a bit of damage there so 30 to 40 euros that's probably about the maximum <clears throat> i would say that it's uh, worth uh jhl french mandolin signed francesco campanelli 30 to 40 euros that's about right for these kind of uh, mandolins mill knots brand electric guitar not heard of that brand before but it looks like your typical generic kind of stuff got a gibson electric guitar made in the usa standard sg model there 700 to 800 interesting sold in its case with the pv backstage 30 amp a sound master pedal and a color sound wire fuzz pedal made in london it's kind of odd that they wouldn't sell those separately because potentially that color sound pedal could be worth a couple of hundred pounds in its own right so that's a bit strange mill not uh, acoustic guitar there i don't think we need to look at that fender folk guitar there these are always pretty low kind of tier stuff 80 to 100 i'm sure it sounds fine there aria classical guitar once again nothing too crazy this is nice though an american mandolin the gibson model f4 1912 to 1914 two and a half to three thousand these are really nice very dirty this looks like it needs a good clean um but nice looking instrument with that scroll there these are quite popular so i'm not sure what the market is for these in france got the older gibson logo there lovely like details on the buttons as well uh yeah very interesting it's got a bit of information here about the different bits going on here so some bits and pieces mandolin has all its original parts a tailpiece button is original but damaged i think that's quite an interesting instrument i think that's uh definitely a good one to look at now we've got a few more violin based things three quarter cello bow and an abiel wood violin bow nothing too crazy but the estimate is not crazy either set of two abiel wood bows there nickel silver 20 to 30. jtl branded violin bow signed j picodulac doesn't look too bad two cello bows of ex exotic wood nothing crazy you can see there violin viola bow from mirko 66 grams interesting violin bow mirko school some more bows here another kind of potentially abiel wood bow there beautiful frog 50 to 80 had a bit of a hard life not quite sure beautiful frog is necessarily the correct description whole load of bows there possibly something interesting in it for someone lots of pictures actually they've uh, gone to town if you're buying in france it's probably not a bad deal to buy some of those bows in bulk anyway let's move on wow they've got well quite a number of bows actually let's uh it's a Hoya bow there. More bundles here. Some two bows. Let's not get too deep into it. It's more couple of violin bows. Violin bow from the 19th century. Let's have a look at that. French school in Ironwood. Okay. 60 to, uh, sorry, 80 to 100 euros there. Eh? German violin bow octagonal stick in Pernambuco. 80 to 100 German bows can be pretty good. Another a viola bow here, Alfred Knoll. Another German bow, Gustav Prager, which can be quite nice bows actually as well. A couple of other bows here, worth looking at these in more detail. They do have some pretty good pictures but there's quite a lot here another jtl bow there not seeing anything insane so far 
the German bow there two more bows there German school silver mounted definitely needs a bit of uh, TLC but has potential uh, that bow Violin bow Pierre Cuneo going a bit higher in the world here needs a bit of repair there it could be quite nice bow viola bow by Francois Bazar there five to seven hundred we're getting more into the higher level zones here Violin bow by Roger Francois Lot 600 to 800 I mean France it must be absolutely full of uh, French braids because they really did churn them out Paul Jean Bar cello bow here 800 to 1000 interesting violin bow by Emile Francois Huchard 1600 to 1800 nickel mounted got a bazaar bow here 1600 to 1800 final bow by Morison Frere 1700 to 1900 it will need a little bit of TLC and we've got some other more standard bows here Mirko school bow Mark Lebert JTL bow there 60 to 80 cello bow by Nicholas Maline nice 10 to 12,000 here rear button in aluminium which is interesting some of the hill bows had aluminium uh, buttons the frog is really in quite a poor state needing quite a lot of restoration it's really not looking too happy there do we have any pictures of the head nice frog design there and there's the head well hopefully the rest of the uh stick is kind of okay interesting bow more bows here wow another bizarre bow here violin bow german code signed tubs yeah the germans were making lots of kind of bows in in a kind of mock tub style um, with stamps double bass bow in exotic wood quite like double bass bows I think they're quite interesting wow there's ridiculous amounts of bows here uh, another bazaar bow here like we won't get into this too much that's quite a nice head on that bow actually German school aluminium mounted yeah interesting these aluminium mounts people don't really talk about aluminium mounts too much but I think they're more common than uh, we think the three bows here I mean you could do a video all day just talking about the bows but uh, I think it's probably not everyone's interest so we'll just keep going through another bizarre bow here the JTL bow even the lowest kind of tier of French bows are worth money these days so worth looking out for them if you buy any instruments or anything 60 to 80 there another JTL workshop and Lowry Paris it's like a lower tier kind of French bow Maison Frère the Colin Mazat stamp there 1300 to 1500 three quarter violin there they're saying from the Eastern Europe looks okay 20 to 30 revarnished they said there German violin with a Gavinier's label it needs a bit of work there French three-quarter violin pretty standard stuff there quarter size Dvorak violin made in Czechoslovakia that's pretty standard revarnished full-size violin with a Fagnola label so it looks like it's had a bit of worm there hard to say what's going on there an amateur violin from the late 19th century difficult to see what's going on there German violin anonymous 
let's go past that German three-quarter violin can ignore that quarter size French violin from around 1900 with a Strad label that's definitely been eaten the worms have been enjoying that one so uh, that's a bit of a risky buy but 30 to 50 euros is in a pretty terrible state three-quarter miracle violin we could ignore that modern violin ignore that three-quarter Medefino let's also ignore that one for now half size violins you get rid of those and the Romanian ones all these weird sizes one tenth one eighth these are not worth looking at it's another Mirkor violin full size there labelled Stefano Bacani once again just fairly standard looking stuff let's look at the front a bit 40 to 50 euros there nothing too crazy um, quarter size to Vorak violin there German violin full size with another with a three quarter violin in fact so full size not too bad the three quarter a little bit uh, simple there We've got some more fractional size instruments here that are not really worth looking at full size violin with a clots label this looks like your typical 19th century kind of trade violin that's in a bit of a state as well so nothing too good there another German violin 1900 it looks also that it's going to be a fairly trade instrument it's, yeah it's got the concert violin back of the uh, scroll some more fractional violins here full size violin here hoping we'll find some better stuff soon because this is not great so far like just normal trade violins three quarters here we can skip these more fractionals let's have a look at this German violin copy of an old late 19th century the Guarnerius violin so yeah, it looks like just a say a 19th century copy or attempted copy more fractional violins here standard kind of German violins more fractionals don't think there's anything too exciting I can see so far we'll have a look at this but this looks once again it's a pretty standard kind of German trade violin with the lion's head the standard tradey lion head uh, another full size German violin here looks the same looks like it's another one with the yeah, conservatory kind of shield thing that's always a sign or mostly a sign of a trade violin another full size there pretty much the same violin circa 1900 Joseph Diddle all fairly tradey stuff more false full size Mirkor violins here full size German really nothing of note so far what else do we have more kind of full size anonymous stuff let's have a look at this JTL 180 to 200 so a very typical kind of red French varnish let's have a look at this interesting uh, oh, nice case there and uh, I think we can see that the these like painted flames on the back and on the side imitation waves here as they say you do get a lot of instruments like that gradually going up here let's have a look at this JTL that's looking slightly better it's got a bit of a problem at the scroll a bit of a crack but looks not too bad like a lot better made fairly nice varnish two to three hundred I'm sure some of these instruments are quite good some more French Mirkor violins here let's have a look here this is starting to look a bit more interesting French violin 19th century with a Renaudin label 361 length of back it needs a bit of work pitch is a little bit uh, difficult to see but that's not too bad a bit of work on that 250 to 300 euros I don't think that's 
unreasonable estimate here. More full size violins. Uh, let's have a look at this. Violin made in the middle of the 19th century with a Nicholas Amartus label in the style of Grand Jean. Let's have a look at this. Oh, that's quite nice actually. Quite like that. I think that's not too bad. Pictures are a little bit difficult to decipher, but uh, yeah, it looks quite a nice looking instrument there. 250 to 300 euros. I don't think that's a bad uh, estimate. Another French violin, Miracle from 1920, with a Strad label. Looks like fairly kind of standard uh, French work of the time, three to four hundred euros. Seems fairly reasonable. Uh, another full size Steiner type copy, more JTLs. Uh, let's see, how about this 19th century German with a Klotz label? Is it just going to be exactly the same? No, slightly different to the usual stuff that we see, but uh, most likely another kind of trade type uh, violin. Let's see what else? Small French viola, that's good. Well, let's move on to violas. Uh, 38 centimeters, yeah, that is quite small. Nice enough though, 800 to 1,000 euros. We've suddenly jumped up in uh, value there. Interesting violin, anonymous, 356 length of back with a couple of bows. Quite a nice back, but difficult to see what's going on there. Doesn't look super exciting to me. Violin by Francois Breton there from 1830. Looks in uh, pretty good condition to be fair, although there's some interesting cracks or something potentially going on there. It says very good state, 1,000 to 1,200 euros. It's not uh, not bad. Another Miracle violin there. A better level, around 1930s. Label Antonio Lorenzi di San Raffaello. Looks like a better quality uh, Miracle violin there. So 1,000 to 1,200. Nice enough. Another full size violin, a modern one, made by Pierre Hill. Saying there. Oh no, violin made by Leon Mugino Gauch for Pierre Hell. Yeah, it's okay, it's not too bad. Another full size violin there. Some kind of French thing. Violin made by Jean Baptiste Colin Mazat in Paris around 1947, 1200 to 1500. This is a kind of horrible Magini looking thing but these are usually quite uh, popular these Colin Mazars. Violin by Hilaire Darche. 2, 8 to 3. We're getting into the more pricey end of things. Nice woods. Looks very well made, very neat. And a violin by Claude Augustin Miermont made in 1879. 15,000 to 20,000 here. I think they could have taken some better pictures. Nice kind of wood. It's got that kind of deep red French uh, varnish. Not my type of thing, but uh, I'll be in of interest to someone. A rare small diatonic accordion in Galotta. Violin from the workshop of Marc Lebert. We've got more violins here looks like very standard kind of french there strad copy in mirco 1900s violin there more mirco stuff let's just have a look at this violin made as a copy of an old violin labeled montignana looks like that kind of typical 19th century type stuff i think we're on to the 
last page now more violins violin made in the workshop of Colin Mazafi okay three-quarter German violin there more German violins anonymous violins JTL let's have a look at this German violin from the 20th century looks pretty low quality stuff there violin by Charles Jean Baptiste Colin Mazat 900 to 1000 The Sun once again another one of these Magini type ones which are not too keen on not the Mirko violins here more Mirko more Mirko stuff interesting anonymous French violin made around 1840-1850 another Magini model this looks a little bit uh, nicer 1800 to 2000 sold with a bow doesn't look too healthy and what else do we have here some fractional cellos there modern ladies cello signed Lothar Semmelinger made in Mittenwald 2003 so I presume this is a modern workshop cello there Anonymous full size cello made in the 2000s and another fractional cello. So, well, there we go. That's the um, Alexandra Landra uh, auction of musical instruments. Some interesting stuff, actually, to be fair. There's a few things that are definitely quite curious. So, I recommend having a look at it. I'll put a link in the description as always. Check it out, see what you think. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Ciao. Many thanks for tuning in to the Musical Instrument Investigator. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon.